And we conclude tonight with Mike Kimball, who is an, an artist here in San Francisco, a successful artist. And uh, I've invited him to be on the program because I just think you, uh, you have uh, captured uh, the city. You know, in other words, this is your passion, uh, along with, I'm sure, other uh, subjects. But the city and the industry, especially the industry, yeah, absolutely. The industry, which is, you know, we don't see that as a subject very often. Yeah, there's there's not a lot of artists that uh, that are sort of looking at industry as a subject matter for their paintings. But, uh, you know, I, I really do find uh, industry, uh, architecture, uh, as a subject matter, I find it very interesting, very the compelling. Thing, the uh, we're going we're going to have some uh, some pictures uh, shown while we're talking. We're going to talk about this current series, which you call the Cargo Series, yes. which is dear to my heart because I'm a, a, a maritime freak and <laughs> uh, have, a, you know, have been involved with supporting containerized shipping as a commissioner for BCDC and also have done some model work. I do see the, the beauty of containers, and you saw them too. Uh, I, I didn't think there's anybody else out there. That would see it, but there's there's a there's a magic to all that geometry when the ships come in, and you captured that. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm totally uh, I'm totally fascinated by that, and uh, also especially the colors that you see down down in the port. Um, a lot of people when they view my work, they think those colors you've you've gone with some sort of pop color. This color is too saturated, but if you actually are down there and you're paying attention to the colors that you're seeing. That is the palette. It's amazing that, that all those colors exist in the port. Yeah. And, of, and of course, uh, just that machinery, that industry. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm originally from, uh, from out in New Mexico, so uh, I had never experienced it before I'd uh, come out to the Bay Area. And when I saw it, I was just fascinated. See, and that's why I had to have you on because Yes, that's what really, uh, when I drive over the bridge, I, I, I get excited like a kid because of, of the excitement it creates with those huge cranes and which ships are in port, and they're so huge. People don't realize how huge they are, and yet you saw beauty there. Tell me about one, one thing here. I, I'm reading from your bio. Um, whenever I look at the city, I end up seeing it in terms of patterns and textures and layered geometry. It's all in plain sight if you look at it, look for it. What I was curious about is, did this kind of hit you coming into the city, or have you always seen the world that way? Well, you know, I've, I've always had a, a, a fascination with architecture. Um, and in fact, before uh, becoming a fine artist, I was, uh, I really had considered a career in architecture. But, um, so I guess when I'm looking at the city, um, you know, you're looking, say, at a skyline, and you've got reflections in the buildings of other buildings, and they're geometric, and you have all these diagonal lines going on. And then there's this uh, a layering, a, a textural layering, where all the advertising is there, and it's reflected into the glass. And, you know, what you see is, is, is sort of built up, and it's, it's very dense. And uh, again, coming from, you know, more of a rural area, um, I just uh, perhaps I'm I'm looking at it with a uh, you know a fresh eye. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe if you grow up in the city, you don't you don't think about it so much. Um, I'll tell you, I, I this is the time when it's raining, when the city is most exciting, even for I think people who don't who normally look at the city at night. But when it's raining, I think they, that's some of that some of that energy comes through by the reflections. Yeah, absolutely. All the lights, especially. Yeah, and uh, that's that's one thing that. Um, that I tried to capture in some work. I'd, I'd uh, spent some time uh, in Tokyo, and while I was there, uh, it, w it must have been the rainy season because it seemed like it was raining every other day. But at night, especially in some of the, um, say, like uh, Shinjuku, which is a, a kind of a uh, atmosphere where you know the young kids go to hang out and have oh. a good time, the there's no uh, there's no restriction as far as the signage, as far as how many lights you can have in it. And so it's like Las Vegas. It's uh -huh. lit up, and it's lit up in the in the you know the water in the street. It's it's it just sparkles. You know, I'm, we're going to have a um, a link to your website. And when when I did go there, I mean, of course, I, I, this cargo series 
Uh, by the way, I was going to come to the opening, but critical mass made a mess out of my neighborhood, and so I, uh, another part of the living yeah, in the city. So I had to stop. But uh, thank you, critical mass. The um, they're coming into the neighborhoods now. You know, uh, it's not just the downtown that they're trying to send a message to. Um, I knew about the cargo series. I, 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 uh, from when we had Therese Martin on from Open Studios, mm -hmm. and uh, but when I went to your website and saw that Tokyo series, I realized you have you have so many dimensions. And I always wondered, and we talked about this, when you're in one stream and you're 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 using colors and you have a subject matter like the Tokyo series, which will be available if they go to their website and, and look at your your portfolio. Now, you come over here and do the cargo series, does that mean that that's gone forever, that Tokyo series is gone, you really can never go back there and do that again? I, I wouldn't say it's gone, but what I would say it precedes what I'm doing now. I would say the cargo series, uh, and it certainly develops out of that. What I've always been trying to do with all this work is I'm trying to reach a point uh, where the literal uh, begins to break down and become abstracted. So what is that point? And I'm trying it in different ways. And for instance, with the Tokyo series, when you see that the actual paintings up close, it's just a lot of little blobs. And it's very hard. You really have to step back. And when you do, you say, that's not an abstract painting. That is a painting of a city. And with the cargo series, it's along similar lines. I'm trying to, in this case, strip out all of the visual information so that you almost have a geometric abstract composition yet uh, especially if you know about you know the the ships and the cranes and so forth your mind actually starts to fill in that information and so I'm finding I don't have to p supply you with a depiction of every little bolt on that crane because I can give you this very geometric shape and by implication, say with shadow and so forth, your mind is understanding that you know this is an image of the port, even if it is a little bit abstract. And isn't, and it, it isn't at the same time. In some ways, it also is. It's it's what's there, but it's it, it, it does have um, a, a, an artistic beauty to it. The yards and, and on the ship. I mean, it, it's. You see, you can tell I'm a nutcase too because <laughs> I I see this. I d I do see this, and and you I know, celebrate it because I think. It is just incredible that it's right here at our, for our doorsteps. I mean, you got banking, or you have finances, or you have whatever. They don't have this component of, of a visual presence that's really quite attractive, and it's right out in the open. That's true. <laughs> you yeah. Know? There was a celebration of industry only really in art, I think, in the kind of that socialist era of the 30s and so on. Yeah. Celebration of the worker and so on. Mm -hmm. But I don't know of any. Do you know of any other artists that are that, are that intrigued by these kinds of visual images. Well, you know, one artist who, who is certainly an influence on my work, uh, who, who was working in that, in that time, in the 30s, was Charles Sheeler. And he was a photographer and a painter. And he, he was commissioned by Life magazine to go out and photograph the uh, River Rouge plant, the giant industrial Ford, you know, when they're making I guess, would that be Model T's, Model mm -hmm, A's, whichever mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. was the second one. You know, so at that time, the industry had really geared up, and, and people wanted to celebrate that. And so Charles Sheeler uh, sort of put it in perspective for him, so mm -hmm. to speak. And yeah, he's definitely uh, been an influence on my work. Why is there such a strong uh, background? Your background is so, is so strong in printmaking. I mean, you've won awards. You are. You're on, uh, you know, in the California Society of Printmakers. You won the Yoso Hamaguchi Scholarship for Printmaking. Uh, tell mm -hmm. me that whole world of your of yours. Well, you know, uh, the way I got into printmaking is I've worked as a graphic designer and art director uh, here in downtown San Francisco when I came to the city, and I really, and before I made the shift to um, being more of a fine artist, uh, I wanted to find something that I could do that you know, as an adjunct to working in graphic design and printmaking uh, seemed logical. I had, I had sort of studied it a little bit in the past when I was a, a student. And there's some really great printmaking facilities here uh, through the uh, City College runs a printmaking program. What are we talking about Mason. here? Now we're talking, as an art, what are we talking about? Well, printmaking, um, there's several different uh, sort of 
media, printmaking media, if you will. There's there's etching, uh, which is a, a process where you're creating, you're etching lines into something, and, and lithography is similar to that. And then there's also relief printing, which is where you kind of carve away everything you don't want printed. What's raised is transferred onto the paper. Uh, so that would be like a woodblock print, for instance, mm -hmm. is a relief print. And screen print, which is what I, I had uh, done these uh, cargo prints with, is a stencil print, where what you've done is you have a, a stencil where ink is passing through that stencil, printing onto the page, but it's, it's prevented from printing anywhere else. And so you're kind of printing shapes. Do you do several runs then? Yeah, yeah. How many runs, for example, in the cargo series? Uh, there were eight, yeah. And what I did is I chose to use uh, the same palette because it is that palette of the, you know, of the Oak Port of Oakland. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just made sure that I had um, each of those colors in each of the prints. And in some cases, it was just a little tiny square, but uh, you know, for consistency, it's there. We'll, we always talk, when we talk with artists, about the challenge of living and working in San Francisco and the excitement that keeps people here despite the cost. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a conflict, isn't it? It's a, yeah, it is. I mean, it, it's a challenge, to be sure. But you know, I think uh, artists have come up with uh, creative ways of, of getting around that. Um, you know, one of the things uh, that I did for a number of years is I literally worked on the kitchen table. You know, we we have a small space. Luckily, my wife, Rita, was very, uh, you know, she was very forgiving about that. But um, later on, um, you know, also I think artists are, they really can network amongst themselves. And I found out about my studio space that I have now just through that. And uh, now I'm in the studio, the Soma Artist Studios on Bryant. Well, how important is it for you to have interaction other than finding locations? But how, how significant is San Francisco right now in terms of cross-fertilization of ideas and so on? Is it, is it pretty much everyone is doing their own thing? You know, uh, I would say there's a lot of different groups doing a lot of different things. But for instance, I'm... I'm aware of what some artists, you know, what some of the artists are doing in Oakland. I'm, I'm sure that they're aware of what some other artists are doing mm -hmm. in San Francisco. Uh, being, uh, being part of ArtSpan kind of puts you, uh, you know, makes you aware of what your peers are doing. Yeah, the catalog is just extraordinary. Yeah, it's really grown. Which is where we yeah. saw you, and uh, I mean, it's, it's just it's amazing the diversity of, of styles and subjects in the in the Bay Area. I think that was really San Francisco only that art span. Oh yeah, and you know, and and uh, thirty seconds, and and artists do pour over that catalog to see what else you know what other people are doing. It's well, we're glad that you stayed here in San Francisco, and uh, uh, just a delight to have you on the program. We have the website for people to check out and see your portfolio, and we wish you the very best. Well, thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, Mike Kimball, and thank you for joining us. <coughs> we'll see you next time. Visit our website at www dot sfunscripted dot com